Well, since we started doing these videos on various alternative fuel methods like the, the smoking in a hot vapor engine and the pulled carbon and all that, we have found ourselves climbing down this unique automotive rabbit hole. It's something I never knew existed, but it's, it's there. And there's an entire cult of people that believe, like with every, every fiber of their being, they believe that it's possible to have a 100 mile per gallon carburetor, or 200, whatever it happens to be, and that gasoline vapor systems are the answer. What sets this subculture apart from other automotive subcultures, the ones that I'm accustomed to, is that we're mechanics and we build things and we look for quantifiable results. And if we don't get those quantifiable results, we redo it. We build things, they either work or they don't. I've built things that worked, I've built things that didn't work. And part of the mechanical process is to build something, and if it doesn't work, you learn from that and rebuild it and make it better. That's, that's the process, you know. You're supposed to fail. If you don't fail, you'll never learn. But we're always looking for hard answers. We're always looking for numbers. So, like for instance, if you're talking about performance, if you have a car that runs, you know, 15 seconds, and you do this, that, and the other thing, and it runs 16 seconds, you know, you went wrong. So you go back and, and you change this and you change that, and now it runs 14 seconds, right? So you made a quantifiable result, and that's your you know, that's that's your reward for it. But the people who deal in this in this gasoline high mileage conspiracy realm don't see things like that. They believe in what they do. They don't necessarily seek the hard numbers or the facts or, or quantifiable results. They just believe. They, they insist on believing. It kind of goes counter to the mechanical mindset. We're always looking for a tangible fact. So, we did the video on the smoky hot vapor motor and the Pogue carburetor, and there are others, the Tom Ogle thing, which I didn't want to get into, the Stanley Meyer thing, which, I, I, from a mechanical standpoint, this, this stuff is kind of crazy. But we did the video on the Pogue carburetor, and a gentleman named Michael Venuzzi, and this is, this is Michael right here, and this is his channel, uh, Gasoline Vapor Systems, and this is a video, one of several videos he did on his car. He built this Camaro. And it has a 350 Chevy in it, and he gets 35 miles to the gallon. I mean, it's a long way from 100 miles to the gallon, or even 50 miles to the gallon, but he gets 35 miles to the gallon on it, and that's acceptable. I mean, that's it's respectable. 35 miles per gallon on a in an old Camaro with a 350 Chevy is pretty stout. And when we did the video on the Pogue carburetor, Michael jumped into the comments like just one after another after another, explaining how his thing works and why it works and why it's superior and how he's improved on all of these previous ideas. So I reached out to Michael and I was like, Michael, you seem to really, you know, you've, you've got a thing going here. Why don't we do a feature on your car? I want to do a feature on your car. And then he says, we, but we need to quantify the results. So. You're claiming that you have 35 miles to the gallon. I says, how does the car perform? How is its zero to 60 performance? How is its passing gear? And he was telling me, well, it gets 35 miles to the gallon at 55 miles an hour. I says, well, that's great. That's awesome. But what does it do? How does it perform at least as good as a stock engine? And he says, well, it gets down the road. Okay. Michael, can we find a chassis dyno? near you, he's in Nevada, and he says, can we find a chassis dyno near you, and I'll pay for the, for the dyno time. And he says, can we get one and put the car on there and actually test it, get, it, get you know, quantifiable performance numbers out of it. And I'm sincere in that, like, I'm not trying to trip anybody up. I'm not trying to, like, box anybody in and say, you know, oh, you know, I'm going to show how you failed. No, it's, it's the exact opposite. If it works, I want you to show the world. I want you to show me everybody that it works. Let's do this with numbers. So I says I extended the invitation and we were on the phone for a long time. I figured it would be a quick conversation but he kept trying to insist, he kept insisting that I didn't understand how his system worked and that I didn't get it. I said, all right, we're fine. Well, you know, find a chassis shop, find a chassis dyno, 
and we'll do this thing. And, and, and I, I left off with him with that. So then I, yesterday, somebody brings this to my attention. He has a gasoline vapor system page on Facebook, a group on Facebook. And uh, somebody asked him, are you, going to, are you going to take Uncle Tony up on his offer? And I invited him actually to be on a live stream. So this is what he writes. This is what Michael writes. I don't know yet. I'll see what happens. When I was talking with him, I get the impression that he really doesn't have a complete understanding of how my system works. Wrong, Michael. I know exactly how your system works. I get it. I understand it. So let's start. Um, he has a lot of deeply embedded preconceived misconceptions. I have no embedded preconceived misconceptions. I understand the concept of vapor systems. I get it. I know how they work. I understand internal combustion. Uh, and then like a lot of other people, he is hostile to and is coming in with a closed mind about the whole idea of heated gasoline vapor systems. Most hot riders, drag racers, want the coolest air temperature. And, and he goes on to explain the difference between like the mentality of a hot rider drag racer and what he's doing. Let's get something straight. I understand how it all works. I understand how your system works. So this is what it appears to me. You're getting 55 miles, you're getting 35 miles to the gallon at a 55 mile an hour cruise. What he has here is a small block Chevy, it's a 350 Chevy in this Camaro, and he's got a T5 transmission and a 270 gear. He explained all of this to me. And he's running it all through a motorcycle carburetor. So he has a, a small motorcycle carburetor, then he has his heat exchanger, and then he has a turbocharger, and he's feeding it all into this small block Chevy. And this is how he's getting his 35 miles a gallon. Now, as he's ex explaining this to me, I'm saying to myself, and I tried to explain to him, I tried to say to him, at 55 miles an hour, it takes about 20 horsepower to move that car down the road at a steady cruise, at a steady state. So I have no doubt that your height vapor system, based on your, your numbers that you're giving me, 35 miles to the gallon at 55 miles an hour, I have no doubt that your small block Chevy can make the 20 or so horsepower that it takes to cruise this car down the road. But how does it accelerate? How is it from 0 to 60? How is it from, let's say, passing gear, from, from, from 50 to 70 or 80 miles an hour? How is it in traffic? And his answer to me was, it'll get down the road. Oh, that's not a good answer, man. This is the problem that you're having with these gasoline vapor system people. They, and, and he's got the comments on his, on his videos here. He's got a few videos of his car and explaining how his system works and everything. But he's even got the comments turned off. The gasoline vapor people seem to hang on to a belief. And it's the same thing with these gasoline conspiracy people. The Tom Ogle thing. So you look at the Tom Ogle story, right? And right off the bat, as a mechanic, I see an instant flaw. Because as, he, as, as Tom Ogle started his, his journey to this uh, ultra high mileage system, he found that he blocked off, the, he sealed the gas tank on the car. And he found that uh, the car would only get about 20 miles to the gallon. Or, I'm sorry, it would only go about 20 miles an hour. It would start to buck and pop and backfire. Which, if you seal the gas tank, obviously, you're talking about a carburetor engine. The gas tank has to be vented. So if you seal the tank, it, you know, it, it, can't, it can't pull fuel. So it's going to run out of fuel. Then the next step in his story is that he looked under the car and found that the gas tank had iced up. Well, no, that's impossible. It could not have happened. If you sealed the tank and no air can get into the tank, then it's impossible for the gas to go through that atomization process in the tank, no less, that would cause icing. Then the next step of the story is that he heated the tank, and after he heated the tank, and then he started getting 100 miles to the gallon, and then the government killed him. In the meantime, somebody actually who knew him personally jumped into the comments and said, the guy was a pillhead. <laughs> and he was like, he, like, he OD'd. The Stanley Meyer thing, with the, the turning water into, into gas. 
Nobody can offer any proof that any of these things work. Nobody wants to address the actual mechanics of how these things work. And in the words of the, of the people who worked with them, like for instance, Smokey Eunuch, and Smokey Eunuch is an internal combustion god. This is an icon of genius, right? Undisputed genius. When Smokey Eunuch puts his heart and soul into a project, that, an ongoing project, that's funded by, by the automakers, and comes to the conclusion after it's all said and done is that it's just not worth the effort. It's, you know, that's it, done. And you get a guy like Pogue, who in an interview after, like at his own words, an interview 15, 20 years after the fact says, no, I never made those claims that it got 100 miles on a gallon. That was the newspaper and the magazine guys making these fantastic claims. None of that seems to matter to these vapor people. They insist that there's government conspiracies, that there's in carburetor inventions that are like, you know, top secret and people get snuffed because they know too much and all this other. Oh, and my favorite one is they changed the gasoline. The, the, the gasoline doesn't vaporize the way it used to. It goes on and on and on. It's a rabbit hole. It's a crazy rabbit hole. And to somebody who's used to just simple figures, okay, here, here's, here's the power it makes. Here's what it weighs. Here's the zero to 60. Here's the quarter mile time. Here's the passing gear time. Here's how much power it makes here, there, and the other place. Here's what it made before. Here's what it made after. To somebody who's used to, and I think that's pretty much the, the whole mainstream car culture, performance car culture, we can't understand how it's just like, well, you have to believe that it works. If you believe that it works, it'll work. <sighs> Michael. I extend the invitation again, and I'm doing it now in front of like a regular audience instead of just, you know, us communicating. Michael, if your system works, please take me up on the offer. Let's put your car on a chassis dyno and let's put it through its paces, just the way it sits. Let's see what the actual performance is. What, the, what power does this thing make? My assumption is that if you took a stock small block Chevy, a, a well-running small block Chevy, and fed it through a motorcycle carburetor and held it at a steady 55 mile an hour cruise, you'd probably get 35 miles to the gallon. It would accelerate like a dog. You'd have no passing gear. But there is no doubt in my mind you could take a stock motorcycle carburetor, I could take the SNS Supri off of, off of my 61 Sportster, bolt it on top of a, of a, a, a 360 Mopar and get 50, 35 miles to the gallon at 50 miles an hour. No question. Show us how your system works. Show us that anybody in this gasoline vapor space, show us tangible, quantifiable results that it can actually work. Anybody in the gasoline vapor conspiracy world, right? Show us evidence that any of these things actually functioned and actually did what they were supposed to do. Even better than that, Show us any sort of evidence that these people got snuffed because they knew too much, that this is giant government, global, big oil conspiracy. And again, I go back, I am number one conspiracy guy, but I'm also a mechanic and I know what works and what doesn't work. I know what's possible and what's not possible. Please prove me wrong. I'll be your biggest fan, I swear to God. I'll see you tomorrow.